And here we are, folks, Tuesday. And when it's Tuesday, you know what that means. It's time for another edition of the ETB Sportsnet Coaches Show, presented by our friends and neighbors out in Marshall Hometown Tire. So we want to give them a special shout-out, as always. And once again, we are pleased to be joined by the head women's basketball coach at ETB, Rusty Rainbow. Glad to say I'm glad I caught you this time. You can't escape from me again, but that's okay. We understand the circumstances as to why. Well, Coach Rainbow, um... Two hard-fought games last week against some of the ASC West competition. Could have gone 2-0, and but a split is what it ended up being. Uh, we'll start things off with Mary Hart and Baylor. You know, it always seems like when you play them, it seems to come down to the last possession, to say the least, and unfortunately you weren't able to get that last possession. But hard-fought game, especially knowing that this is a team that we could potentially face in the upcoming ASC Conference Tournament as well. Yeah, I was <clears> – <throat> I was – Tremendously proud of our team uh, on Thursday against Mary Hart Baylor. Um, you know, we did lose, came up short, lost by what five, I think it was. Um, led, led most of the game. Um, you know, had a ten point lead in the third quarter and was playing really, really well. And then um, they shot a bunch of free throws right after that. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's one of those things where it's hard to defend a free throw and. Um, uh, for whatever reason, um, you know, just one of those things where we, you know, I guess fouled a couple of too many times and they got to shoot a lot of free throws. And um, But our kids, they battled. Um, they, I felt like they deserved to win and was really, really proud of the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday practices and preparation they had. We uh, felt like that whenever the girls walked into the locker room and on the court before the game, they were as locked in as they've been all year. Uh, and I just thought that the way that our girls played really was honorable um, to the Lord and honorable to the university and had a lot to be proud of. And, you know, one thing we can't do is we can't let a scoreboard define us either way. You know, there's times where you win a game, um, probably like on Saturday that we didn't deserve to win. Uh, that doesn't define you in a good way. And then there's times where you lose a game that you deserve to win and it doesn't define you in a bad way. So we, um, we just want to keep showing up every day, having a pure heart, um, respecting the game, respecting our opponents, being thankful for the opportunity, and keep just working to be the best team we can be. Certainly, Coach. And obviously, like you just said, uh, you know, for example, on Saturday, it was a game that you probably didn't deserve to win just because of the fact that you got off to such a bad start and you were able to find yourself in an early hole. But fortunately, you were able to kind of rally from behind, and it was kind of a nip and tuck game. But finally, you were able to take control from there and just hold on for the win. But obviously, you know, first half and second half, they, they can be two different halves at times. What was the adjustments that just were needed to be made in the process? Well, I honestly don't know what, what it was. Um, you know, we came out on Saturday, and um, I think the girls were still a little flat, a little just emotionally <clears throat> drained from the game on Thursday. Um, we had a really, really hard practice on Friday. Um, to win the conference tournament in ASC, you have to win three games in three days. And so the last couple of weeks and this week, we have practiced really, really hard Monday, through, Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, played on Thursday and then come back on Friday and practiced really, really hard and played on Saturday, trying to get our bodies and our minds used to having that amount of intensity to, to be sustained throughout the week. And so, um, you know, we lost a tough, tough one on Thursday and then come back Friday and we got after them. They worked really hard. It was about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes of as all intense as it could be. And then we just came out really, really kind of, I don't know, flat or um, drained or whatever on Saturday and only scored 15 points in the first half and just looked, um, looked off, looked out of sorts, um, very undisciplined with what we were doing. Um, went into halftime and, and really didn't say much to the girls at all. Just told them, you know what, uh, if you're willing to lose a game because of you're being undisciplined and being mentally weak, then that's on you and you can, you can reap that or you can get it together. And what's crazy about it is, is and I told our team this after the game on Saturday, is we could play a terrible first half in every single way and play a great four minutes of the third quarter and then play a great fourth quarter, which played a fantastic fourth quarter, and win. That's how good we are, that we can play a quarter and a half and win a game. But it also shows we've still got a long way to go in terms of our maturity as a team um, because we've got to get to the point where we put together four full quarters. You know? so, but I was, uh, it was cool to see you know, Missy Kilo had a fantastic outing, hadn't played all year long, and came out and played fantastic. And um, you know, Kendrick Clark has continued to just 
steady Eddie every single day, just defense and rebounding and, and points and just doing a great job. So there were some highlights in the game on Saturday too, and I'm glad our girls found a way to be resilient and, and gritty and find a way to win because uh, Concordia played very well, uh, very well. But we just, um, you know, we've got to find a way to finish games off like we didn't do on Thursday and then be better on Saturday. Certainly, Coach. And you did kind of bring it up in the last question as well. You know, one of the themes for this team is to basically earn your stripes. Like, players work hard in practice, they get their opportunities. We saw that earlier with Molly Daniel, who worked hard in practice. And then there was a period, and then last week or so, it was Paige Royal who came off the bench and put into record form. But Saturday, obviously, Missy Kilo was really the big difference in that game, scoring nine points, including the game-winning three-pointer. I know that she's rarely had her opportunities to come off the bench and contribute in the way that she did, but it seemed like after all that she had to sit down in the games that you know she couldn't play in because the situation didn't call for her, but finally the opportunity presented itself, and when she did, she really reaped in the rewards and was able to contribute. So what is it about her that makes her such a perfect asset for this team? Well, Missy is... Uh... Um, Missy is an amazing person. She is a very talented basketball player. God has gifted her with some amazing abilities. Um, you know, Missy is a freshman, and she has acted, <coughs> not acted, um, she has handled the transition of being away from home and out of high school and into college, handling college classes, college practices, like every freshman typically does. It's been a, a tough transition. Um, but last week, Missy had an amazing week of practice, kind of like you alluded to. And that's one of the things that if kids don't practice well for us, they don't play. And you may go a whole semester and not get off the bench if you do not come and practice well. Um, because that's how important it is to us that you earn what you get every single day. But she had a great week of practice, really the last two weeks. And so we were at halftime, and me and the coaches are sitting there in the hallway before we went and talked to the team and just like, you know, what do we do? What's the answer? Who, who can we get in there that's going to play with some fight and some energy and some enthusiasm? Um, and, and Coach A said, hey, why don't we give Missy a shot? She had a great week of practice. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. I don't care. You know, let's, I mean, we'll give anybody that wants to play. It can bring some energy and enthusiasm and positive vibes to the team. We'll give them a chance. And kind of like you said, I mean, we've had a lot of girls that have had their moments this year, Molly and Paige and April and uh, Missy and I mean, Tati, a lot of girls that aren't in the typical starting lineup to get out there and have their moment and do great. Um, and, you know, we tell the team all the time, just be ready. And when your moment comes, if you produce, you'll get more minutes. And if you don't, well, you'll probably go back to sitting and watching a little bit until you've earned it again. But um, really, really cool to see Missy play with as much confidence and swag and just um, energy is what she did and the cool thing was after the game she said you know I was trying to play and help my team because I knew that's what they needed so certainly definitely great to see your bench players continue to contribute as well and uh, well your final two regular season home games as well and obviously there's a lot that goes into it as well you're still trying to figure out what position you'll be as far as the conference tournament is concerned and you're taking on two really tough challenges in both Louisiana College and Bellhaven but also the fact that it's going to be emotional because you're honoring six seniors, I believe, a couple of them having been part of your championship team from a couple of years ago. Um, so obviously the six seniors as well, definitely a tough transition. But like when you've been here, you've obviously have tried to get the players to, you know, basically go with what it is that you wanted to see with their program over the time. How have these six seniors bought into them? Because I know there was only one of them, Amanda Wilson, that was on the team previously before you got here. How have all of them bought into it and make this program a successful one? Well, I say it all the time. These six seniors are just amazing young women. They're all different, um, and they're all so different, so many different ways. But it has been awesome to see how God has brought this group of seniors together for this time. Um, they have transformed a program, and you're right, you know, starting, Amanda has more invested than anybody, anybody here because she's been here for four full years, and that's, that's special. Uh, all, all five of the other seniors are all transfers. So, you know, we, we are so thankful for Amanda, just what she's given to the program, what she's given to the university, how much she has done in her time here. Uh, to me, her legacy will always be as one of the best post kids to ever play here and it's just proven I mean day in day out she's just there and consistent and like you said has helped them uh, help this program go to an elite eight, elite eight uh, and win a championship but you know we're thankful for her and then 
Kim and Tati and April were also here um, that first year. They all came in and transformed the program with their leadership and their, their character and their um, just energy. Uh, and then, you know, to see how God has brought Kendrick and Bianca here um, through their journey. Just all, all these young ladies are beautiful young women. They're going to make great wives, great moms, great bosses. Uh, I know the Lord is proud of who they are as women, and I know this university is better for having them here. So it's, it's going to be a, a wonderful celebration of them. Hopefully we can get a win and then go out on a win. Um, but it is also just uh, a wonderful you know, closure to a regular season and a career, and hopefully not the end. Hopefully we can you know, play three more games in a tournament and then the six more games in the national tournament. But um, these girls are something special, and we're going we're gonna to be very sad but also very thankful. Absolutely, Coach. You can't wait for these two games as well. And obviously, you know, you play in Louisiana College and Bellhaven. Of course, they're fighting for a conference tournament spot as well, especially with Bellhaven, considering that, you know, the last time y'all played them, you had to kind of overcome a tight first half, uh, but then you were able to pull away from them. And this is a team that, of course, was one of the top scoring teams in the conference as well. So, you know, when you look back to those games in particular and you're trying to figure out, okay, what did we do here and what we need to do better so that way we can apply it here as well, does that necessarily kind of make it easier as far as, like, you know, how you played against them the last time and especially when you're playing at home or is it just like you still got to figure out a way to make some adjustments and maybe correct the mistakes we need to make? Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, we play Bellhaven first and that's our whole focus is always on the first game of the week. And so, you know, we're, we're going back and watching the film, watching all their most recent films. Um, you, it, it does help that you've already played them. Um, it helps in terms of already being familiar with personnel and some of the stuff, but you have to start back over and start reviewing since the last game um, and, and moving forward. And so there's still a lot of work to be put in. We actually got into the middle of that, that first game at Bellhaven and had to change our game plan and go small and, and put Kim at the five and go with another guard. And that was probably the difference in the game that we went small and it changed a lot of things because Bellhaven presses and gets after you and forces a lot of turnovers and scores a lot of points. And so, um, you know, we had to make some in-game adjustments there. And um, so we'll, we're trying to get prepared to figure out what we would need to do for this game as well. But, um, yeah, our whole focus right now is just how do we prepare for Bellhaven at this point. A good point there, Coach. And once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us here on the ETB Sports and Coaching Show. Can't wait to talk to you more as the year goes on. Final two regular home season games, but that doesn't mean their season's done after those two games. They'll have a conference tournament as well. All right, that's going to do it here for another edition of the ETB Sports and Coaching Show. We'll have more with our coaches on this YouTube channel.